Hello again, and as always, thank you very much for your time. I hope that the video I'm going to make for you is going to help you in figuring out what type of bayonet goes with your Egyptian rolling block. So, very quickly, if you're just looking to that, um, you'll be done with this video in just about a minute. Uh, I'm going to give you a little bit more history on the chasse, on the uh, uh, Yaragan, which is the style that they're using. And uh, I want to help you a little, maybe uh, <clears throat> do a little modification. Anyway, let's get through this really quickly. As you see here, we have two bayonets that looked exactly the same. One is the Chaspo Gras, and one is the Egyptian Rolling Block. As you can see, they look extremely similar. The Chaspo will have writing on the top and markings. As usual, you see those mark those kind of writing, and the Egyptian rolling block will sometimes have the Arabic style of writing. Mine does not. As a matter of fact, it has Western numbers here, so I don't really know the history of this particular bayonet. But the most important thing that you want to look for, because if your bay if the bayonet you see doesn't have any markings, you might question whether or not it's the right bayonet for the Egyptian rolling block. But this right here how it is smooth and even all the way across. That is the telltale sign of an Egyptian rolling block compared to, look at here, the Gras and the Chaspo, all right? There's even one that has a, a cut lower and straight across, which is a German captured Gras de, uh, of uh, Chaspo bayonet during the Franco-Prussian War that they modified to fit uh, 71 Mausers. Here is actually a captured uh, scabbard that they modified for their type of frogs. This is the type of frog that the French would use. And as far as I know, it's also the type of frog that the Egyptians would be using. But either one um, is kind of fine, so long as you can get away with it, I guess. Uh, and of course, the Egyptian would have some markings on it. Mine does not. I bought this one with my chaspo, which is technically not correct and I bought this one with the uh, rolling block which is hopefully correct so that's uh, that's basically the thing that you want to look for when it comes to the Egyptian rolling block okay very simple very easy uh, I would suggest that you look at sales for the gras I suppose you never know if somebody made a mistake and point put this one out as a uh, Gras Chaspo or Chaspo Gras and you realize you're looking at the picture you're like uh oh uh oh it's mislabeled that's, a, that's an Egyptian rolling block because they are a little bit difficult to find and unfortunately you can be looking at about 300 bucks for these things okay um, maybe this one cost me 120 only maybe because it didn't have any uh, Arabic writing people didn't want it or people weren't sure because there's no video like what I'm doing right now on YouTube or Rumble or uh, BitChute. So I'm going to be making videos and putting them on those platforms. Okay. Uh, so hopefully this, that's enough for you to, to say, okay, that's what I want. End of the video. You can walk away now. Now, very quickly, a little tiny bit of history with the with the Yaragan style, originally developed by the Turks, I believe in the 15th century, 16th century. And it, it of course was just a, a small sword. It was not a bayonet until I believe the French started doing it in 1840s. The British in the 1850s also put on a couple of percussion rifles or maybe just one. Of course, during the American Civil War, you saw these also. Um, I'm not sure if the American, I think the Americans might have made them, but I'm sure that they had to use them because since the North and South were buying tons of percussion rifles from Europe or wherever they can get them, if that's the bayonet that came with a particular musket, a percussion rifle that they were buying, that's what they had to have. Now, if you are a reenactor like myself and you can't see yourself buying a $300 bayonet or you just can't find it, which is probably going to be the bigger issue. Let me just tell you this. If you have an Egyptian rolling block, you probably know by now that those are generally the cheapest of the rolling block family, three to four hundred dollars on the average. Some sometimes people want more than that. But if you're looking to get one, those are the cheapest ones generally. And unfortunately, 
they are also the most used up to the bone. I mean, you look through it, it looks like a freaking shotgun. Uh, they're so used up, uh, you'd be lucky to hit the side of a mountain, right? So, what I'm going to tell you that I just did might not hurt so much, okay? What I did was, before I got my bayonet, was that I actually modified the lug nut to accommodate the French chassepot bayonet. And so, you can see that... Uh, for the French Chaspo Gras, this is much thicker than that of the um, Egyptian rolling block. What I did was I shaved it off a little bit. Okay, you can see that I did shave it off, not very professionally, and I did a little bit of adjustment here and there. And so the Chaspo Gras will now fit into my rolling block sorry that's my dog my rolling block however however the Egyptian will not fit into the graw it will not fit in there okay all this is too big for the graw and I would not modify the bayonet if you say oh my goodness quiet and I would not modify the bayonet because it's more rare to find a lot more harder to find and rarer than the actual rifle itself so in any case folks I hope that uh, uh, this video was not too long uh, like I said if you watched into a minute then you got all the information that you need the rest of it is a little bit of history of the Yadagan and you know for us reenactors who kind of need to this guy over here, who need to do some funky stuff sometimes so anyway folks uh, thank you very much for your time Jesus guy uh, and we'll see you next time.